So, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, this works. If not, then uh, I think you might be seeing, um, shall we say, the audio but not the visual for, <laughs> for me for a while. Uh, because this is actually a new camera and I have no idea what the hell um, I did to make it change like it has. Hopefully, hopefully, this is fine. <laughs> but... Uh, just like Boris Johnson, I'm having uh, a whale of a time, just troubles at the moment with this. Uh, but hopefully it's been sorted. But however, Johnson's woes will continue, uh, unlike my technical problems, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So I think this, this sums up exactly the week that Boris Johnson has had, to be honest. So, dazed and confused, Johnson stumbles into the twilight zone with a police escort. It was only five weeks ago that the Conservatives believed the Prime Minister was the, the only possible answer to their problems. And that perfectly sums it up. So, why do people still call it a Tory split on Europe? It's not a split, it's... <laughs> It's an, it's an, ugh, I can't even say this, and this is why you come to this channel, for me butchering words in the English language. The, the epistotomy, the Tory epistotomy on Europe uh, went sceptic this week as Boris Johnson expelled 21 MPs, including two former chancellors and his heroes Winston Churchill's grandson, lost his own brother in a tale we'll call a Cain and far more able and gave a speech so hallucinatory bad it was it was a white-eyed policewoman uh, at at any any uh, at the current rate even robert carlo with only a week to write his johnson bio biography then again johnson might get a majority might get a majority and we'll look back on these as the good old days more on that prospect uh, banter apocalypse later. For now, it feels remarkable to think that barely five weeks ago, the vast majority of Tory MPs were telling us Boris Johnson was the only possible answer to various questions. It turns out those questions were how would <laughs> how would Dudley Dursley and Draco Malfoy's, Mal Malfoy's baby look and behave? What if you shaved a honey monster and put it in a suit? for a court appearance. And does anyone know the ancient Greek for <laughs> shitting the bed? Despite praising uh, since boyhood, uh, Boris Johnson's entire demur is, is of a man who has won a competition to lead the country for a day. He is, he is a Mike Bassett, England Prime Minister, yet wheels out and jokes done 437 times before he's even done the Frank Sinatra and reckons that the crowd can't wait to see him do My Way Again. Johnson must be the only performer whose audience spends his entire gig screaming, please do your new stuff. Physically, he seems in a remarkable state, apart from looking like he cuts his hair with a bacon scissors. The MP's stick is bizarre and juddering, as though some of his innards are trying to escape. Perhaps they have found the tension between the bodily functions that they are required to provide in the national interest unresolvable. Oratory-wise, the MP debut's uh, debut merits a five-word count review. Welcome to the Commons, bitch. As a dispatch box um, astute, Johnson has all the accomplishments of the one of uh, those one of those pisshead character uh, chances who goes out oh, uh, who goes out to carouse uh, the, out of the house at 10 p.m. in December and carol sing for the pub money. Uh, he's delivered what <laughs> what was that of a man finding out in real time that ma <laughs> that maternal which stayed at the accountancy corporate uh, he did in 2000 in 2007 is left well received by those who haven't drunk themselves uh, within an hour of the rental failure. Uh, that is as much as 30% of the House of Commons, and I'd forgive it, I'd give it a fortnight before Theresa May is waving an ironic um, Wenger Inn banner behind him. 
Uh, as for this, uh, as, for, as for his turns away from Westminster, Thursday, as Thursday afternoon found him at a Yorkshire Police Academy, where he appeared <laughs> deeply confused. He resembled a political Elvis, Twilight Years, who had been slapped awake on the tour bus by his manager, given some of his special medicine, and shoved on to greet the LA crowd with the, hello, with the words of, Hello, Philadelphia. But this is Wakefield. It's only just down the road from me. Having a very belatedly uh, taken the stage, actually, before we get at, bravo to the um, to the Yorkshire uh, Remain crew, who managed in less than 24 hours to go out and organise a protest. So well done to those people for doing that, because that was very well done by you guys. They had a great turnout for that protest, the protest, Johnson. So good on you guys. So, having very blatantly taken the stage, Johnson proceeded to die on the <laughs> die on his ass in front of rows of police officers. Does this technically count as death in custody? Certainly, it bore all the hallmarks of such an event, of which there have been a, <laughs> 1,718 since 1990. Not a single con not a single conviction for murder or manslaughter. Which is to say, it was a brutal and disturbing. It happened right in front of multiple police pretending not to notice. And the victim was officially concluded to have done it himself. Thank you in advance to the Police Federation for their forthcoming letters on this paragraph. I'll make time to read it when I retire at 53 years on the stick. There is much discussion about what really cut through this week. With Johnson's greatest uh, collection set against such viral delights as the factual yet simultaneously car crash demolition of Labour's Brexit policy by Emily Thornberry on Question Time, it is quite something to uh, to be better uh, to be better off by fellow panelist Richard Twice, of sort of the radicalised uh, Dalmat uh, catalogue model, but the shadow former Foreign Secretary managed it. As for Jacob Rees-Mogg, leader of the House of Commons, his insolent front bench uh, layabout is still is still lighting up Facebook. And I'm not going to go uh, full ad hominem on Nanny, who was probably uh, only following orders. But I do think the time has come when we will have to ask, has anyone ever done a worse job and stayed in the position longer? She's still there. Jesus Christ, Nanny, you had one job. Teach him some manners. Yes, Jacob Rees-Mogg is 50, and he's. And we have to ask the question, is he even housebroken? Then again, why expect more from a guy who believes that even uh, insistently raped minors should be forced to give birth at the time of this, uh, at the time of his investment fund, profits from the sale of abortion pills? Asked about his hypocrisy, once Rees-Mogg uh, duly declared, that the world is not always what you want it to be. You're telling me, mate, very much ditto. With the world as it is, we have to tolerate the spectacle of the Chancellor of the Duchy of Glynid uh, spelling his loins all over the front bench and compared, com comparing an NHS doctor who wrote off an officially no-deal contingency plans to comparing them to the disgraced anti-vaxxer Andy, Andrew Wakefield. The last piece of utter yobbery saw Jacob humili humiliatingly ordered to apologise, presumably by Dominic Cummings, a man who wide who's widely believed not to have completely uh, completed <laughs> the non old nanny uh, training course. Perhaps it was the terror of Cummings then that prevented Johnson from giving in to either basic human or political uh, in 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 uh, um, an insect. And perhaps uh, ass assisting the fallen policewoman uh, in Wakefield, the PM chose to glibber out his last, uh, last his prepared lines, and then the bulletins he duly led with his claim that he'd rather be in a ditch that, uh, than delay Brexit. For those who found, uh, for those who would find his remains, it is increasingly feels like the case for Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman and the pair of cops from Seven, a movie in which in which pieces of various people are routinely uh, are richly deadly slain to match the deadly sin. A man of many uh, uncomfortable appetites, Boris Johnson has, em has embodied each of these sins at one point in his life. 
And this week, it almost feels as if he was being slapped in like the gutton and forced to be the prime minister himself, forced to prime minister himself to death. Has an, has has any other prime minister done that yet? I think you can fit in just a a bit more prime minister in and a bit more and a bit more and ooh, cut to the shot of uh, Prid and Freeman banging down the door of number ten and choking uh, and shoving their hands into their handkerchiefs. Anyway, you get the idea. With that one, I guess the major philosophical question facing us this week was, would it be all worth it? Would you take three years of political paralysis, a toxic public realm, bitter family rows, and no prospect of even a mid-term nation healing just to watch this one absolute monster reap his own whirlwind live on telly in a horrifyingly hilarious cautionary tale about getting everything you've always wanted? The answer, of, of course, is no. Not even close. And he might even still get a majority. Having said all that, if you've got to get your kicks in somehow in these dark times and you certainly can't enjoy a good uh, a bun fire, what's really left? So chuck another chair, chair leg on the flames and take your warmth where you can. Try and get some rest before he takes a crack at next week. And I think that perfectly sums up this week for Boris Johnson. Um, it has lurched from one calamity to another for the Tories. I mean, you've had Boris Johnson calamity after calamity this week. Um, you've had him continuously lose in the House of Wards, which I think might make him the very first Prime Minister to lose his very first vote in the House. Uh, he didn't lose it as much as Theresa May, which I think would have been even more spectacular. You had um, Jacob Rees-Mogg lounging about, which has done the Tories no favours at whatsoever. You even had Labour with their gaffe on Emily Formbury, um, literally saying that the position on uh, Brexit policy was completely ridiculous in the fact that if they were in power, they would go and get a new Brexit deal, which we don't know if that's even possible. Um, and then they would then campaign against that policy to remain. At that point, you have to ask the question, uh, who knows what Labour's doing at this point? Um, maybe they're finally getting that together. I don't know. Who knows? But as usual, with Brexit, who knows? Who knows, children? Who knows? But the Lord. And even he refuses to appear on Question Time. 